Hello everyone, Madhusudan Raj. This is 14 December 2012. Uh, it's been a long time since I came back here and you know <coughs> discussed something with you. The the time is now. Actually, I was waiting for uh, some news, some new things to come up uh, because nothing else is coming up. Nothing new new is coming up. So I thought that there is nothing much to analyze. The situation is pretty much remaining the same and the government is is on the same uh, path of you know spending spending and they're not you know interested in cutting their spending and they just want to raise taxes and all those fiscal mass and the monetary policy is also <clears throat> on the same path of uh, uh, loose monetary policy they are just you know looking for inflation to cool a bit it's not actually cooling it's going up but they, they are just fiddling the data and through that they want to show that the inflation WPI is you know going down and that's how you know they will get the excuse the RBI will get the excuse of reducing the interest rate probably in uh, 2013 or maybe if possible on this 18 December when they will come out with their uh, last quarter uh, review of monetary policy uh, that I will discuss later on what kind of shenanigans the government and the RBI is doing with the inflation number but the major topic which I thought I will be you know discussing uh, in 2013 but I I decided that let me just discuss it before the program starts the program which I'm talking about is uh, this uh, uh, direct cash uh, subsidy transfer the UPA government to poor people. The UPA government, you know, announced uh, a couple of uh, weeks back that they are going to launch uh, a direct cash subsidy transfer scheme from January 1st, 2012. So, Finance Minister P. Chidambaram uh, is saying uh, that the government intends to complete a uh, rollout of the direct cash transfer through the other system in the entire country by the end of 2013 so what they are going to do is you know uh, they have started the pilot project also what they are going to do actually is uh, they are they have selected something like 51 district uh, districts in 51 uh, in 15 different states uh, where they have identified something like 251 million uh, poor people and they have received those um, other uh, UID card that's identification national ID card or something like that and based on that uh, instead of now giving uh, uh, food and kerosene etc from the public distribution system government is going to deposit some cash amount directly into this uh, poor people's bank accounts and from there these poor people can uh, withdraw their you know cash and they can spend it on all these so called you know uh, necessity items like uh, kerosene as i said kerosene and food and stuff like that so they are going to you know start this program from the 1st january now you have to understand that this is a big scheme you know the excuses which they are giving government is saying that the the former system of uh, uh, public distribution system, the former uh, where they have this rationing shop through which you know they used to distribute this you know food and other such things to poor people. Now they are saying that there is a lot of waste into that and there is a lot of corruption into that. So that's why to remove that corruption and to remove that waste, they are going to transfer this cash directly into poor people's bank account. <coughs> Now the first question arises that if that system was corrupt, then corrupt, corrupted, then what are the what are the uh, what are the chances that uh, this system, the new system, which they are going to bring into uh, uh, replacing the old system, uh, whether that is also not going to be get corrupted? That that is going to happen when you know <coughs> this cash transfer is going to be uh, directly into poor people's bank account. We have to. We have to realize that who these poor people are and whether they are going to get that money into ba their bank account or not. Because most of these so-called poor people, 
they don't even understand what is going on they are completely dependent on government and they are all illiterate and obviously whatever corruption was going on in the former system and the same kind of you know things will also happen with this system but notwithstanding all these you know questions to begin with my focus is on basically economics of all this thing you know now again you understand you know that this direct cash transfer is nothing but inflation right giving cash uh, free cash money with this you know rupee note whatever they are going to transfer in this you know poor people's bank accounts is it's it's not well you know we have to understand you know nowadays uh, you know we are living in a world where people have this you know misconception in their mind uh, which has been perpetrated by the mainstream economists and you know media pundits and you know these state officials bureaucrats and politicians that uh, money is wealth you know this and not only you know <clears throat> if gold and silver was there then that was you know kind of you know a different uh, a situation where you can say that you know it is kind of an asset but this pure paper money is wealth you know it represents some kind of wealth but but you have to understand that it's not wealth you know money can never be wealth money is just a medium of exchange a common medium of exchange which you use to basically go and buy the real goods and services which you want actually to satisfy your needs you know real wealth is not money real wealth is production of real economic goods the stock available supply of real economic goods things like shirt and you know clothes and house and and shoes and you know oranges and apples and fruit and vegetables and grains rice and wheat and and, and computers and cars and and home and whatever you say all these real economic goods this is real wealth you know uh, if it was that simple that by just printing some you know bunch you know a truckload of money and transferring that money into poor people like people's account then that's how those poor people are going to become rich and somehow their standard of living is going to increase if that was the case then you know it you know poor poverty would have been you know removed you know years back what was what is stopping government from you know transferring directly crores of rupees into this poor people's bank account why why stop at some you know thousands of rupees why not just print truckload of money just you know print so many zeros on the notes one and you know you know 12 13 zeros you know print billion trillion dollar notes <clears throat> and give it to everyone right all of us will be richer no all of us will not be richer if you understand the economic laws and how the economy actually functions then as i said the real wealth is you know production of economic goods and and by transferring this money in this you know poor people's account this sub so called subsidy these poor people are not going to become rich in fact their condition will be worse now because you know government is doing nothing and they cannot do anything to increase production because it's a pure consumption sector so what they can do is they can only transfer the wealth which has been generated by the private sector and spend it on pure consumption non productive consumption so when they are going to transfer this money you know when, when they are going to give this money to these poor people what they will do they will go in the market and they will try to buy the you know supply of goods and services for example they will go and try to buy wheat they will try and go to buy kerosene they will try and buy uh, uh sugar for example but on one side they have these notes in their hand but the, on the other side the supply of all these goods has not increased and the only effect this cash transfer is going to have you know over a period of time is the price of all these real economic goods kerosene and oil and kerosene and petrol and and sugar and and wheat and rice and whatever they are what whatever these poor people are going to buy the prices of all these you know economic goods will increase so they are creating inflation right now you know you know which you know whose effect you will see in future you know in terms of higher prices so these poor people are not going to become rich simply by getting this you know free you know subsidy cash subsidy transfer what government is doing is they are making them more poor and that's what they want you know a upa government is you know in trouble right now and what they, they what they are actually eyeing for is uh, more and more votes they are just buying votes you know these poor people they don't understand that this cash transfer is actually harming them 
So as I said, this cash transfer is not going to help anyone. All these subsidies are just destroying our economy. It is burden. Best way to you know remove poverty and lift the standard of living all these poor people is the, is to allow the free market to function. You know, is is to give liberty to people. You know, when free market will be there, we will have a sound monetary system. We will have a gold standard. So, and on the other side, because there will be no government interference into into the economy, economy will be producing more and more real economic goods and on the other side because the money supply is stable the prices will continuously fall they will of course not reach zero that can never happen but the secular trend of prices in the free market economy is always downward and when the prices will be lower people will not have to earn more and more whatever you know nominal earning they will have whatever nominal income they will have their real you know their purchasing power will increase whatever you know you know gold coins they will have for example in their hand it will buy more for them so you know without you know running after this so called you know you know money what they call wealth you know on a falsely people will be you know uh, richer when the economy is producing more real wealth that means supply or production of actual goods and services so that is the way in which how you are going to lift this poor people out of poverty and not by transferring free cash money or currency notes into their account so this is just pure politics and it has nothing to do with you know helping anybody the politicians are just helping themselves you know they just want to remain in power so that's why fooling everyone that's why they are fooling everyone and and this is as i said this is not going to help anyone the already the inflation that means the money supply printing is very high and because of that the fact the price rise is also very high and when this cash you know subsidy will you know start from 1st january you can just imagine where the prices will go prices will definitely rise this is going to devastate the indian economy so these politicians are just destroying the wealth which you know private sector the hard working productive class of the indian you know society is producing they are consuming everything in a non productive way they can only consuming it in a non productive way they can never do that in a productive way so you know this is this is the worst thing and and on the other side uh, government you know economic advisor rangrajan is saying that no use fighting food subsidy food subsidy is important in a country like india and there is no use fighting it yeah so they are just happy with the status quo they do not want to change the status quo they want poor people to remain poor so that they can use them as their vote bank they never want that these poor people really become rich because once they are rich they will no longer you uh, know need any bureaucrats and politicians to run their life so they want these poor people to remain vulnerable to re remain you know poor and they don't want to change the status quo so that's the reason why they are saying that well there is no use fighting this food subsidy well there are very good you know reasons for fighting this kind of stupid economic policies you know if you want to save this economy and if you want to save this society from going into the abyss you know from you know destroying itself then you have to stop all these subsidies all you know ultimately and as i said you just it is not enough that you just stop it in the one sector the government will have to get up from all these sectors and it will have to stop existing only then the real changes will come for better all right so this is about the food subsidy on the other side as i said the fiscal deficit situation is becoming worse and worse so you know um, headlines are saying that india's deficit cutting plan is faltering as clock ticks now how they are trying to cut the fiscal deficit chidambaram he is uh, saying finance minister p chidambaram has banned government officials from holding conferences at five star halls hotels restricted travel and order of freeze on hiring to fill vacant posts so that's how you're going to reduce the fiscal deficit by banning government officials from holding conferences into the five star hotels how much money how much amount of spending you are going to cut by this kind of means it's all ridiculous it's all ridiculous and it's 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 like kind of these people are just you know openly insulting the hard working population of this country you know they should be ashamed of themselves all this all this you know all this you know politicians this this thugs this these guys chidambaram and all these people 
right? Uh, fiscal deficit could reach 5.5 to 5.6 percent. It was 5.1 percent. Then they said it can go up to 5.3 percent. Now they are so now they are saying it can go up to 5.5 to 5.6 percent, right? As I said, they're not going to stop spending. They will only stop spending when they will go broke. And when they will go broke, they are going to make our life also miserable. Right? Before, because before going broke, they will be going after our wealth. You know, right? Already government, you know, is, you know, warning people that they should be declaring their, you know, taxable income. Otherwise, they are going to take very strict steps and stuff like that. My, you know, advice to everybody is basically to avoid paying taxes. Find the, you know, loopholes in the tax law and, you know, you know, stop paying, you know, means don't try to, you know, evade taxes because, you know, not paying taxes is legal offense, so you can go behind the bar. What you have to do is avoid paying taxes, you know, by using legal ways. Find the loopholes and use them. Don't give your money to this, you know, uh, you know, uh, scumbag politicians. Don't give it to them. You know, these are parasites. Don't feed the monster, right? You know, starve the beast, right? You know, finance minister seeks house note for thirty-two thousand crore additional spending. See, so they are just spending. They don't care about the fiscal deficit. All right. And as I said in the beginning of my uh, this, you know, video blog, that uh, they are desperate for. RBI and government is desperate for reducing the interest rate because the growth numbers are faltering. It is, you know, right now 5.1 or 5.3 percent, something like that. So they want RBI to reduce inflation, uh, reduce the interest rate, but the RBI officials are saying that the inflation is still not at comfortable level. Uh, they want it to come down. So the government statisticians and economists are trying every bit hard to bring down that number on paper. So just today, November WPI inflation data was released and it eased to 7.24%. It was 7.6%. It was expected uh, uh, for September was revised to 8.7% from 7.81%. And uh, now it is, you know, they're saying it came down to 7.24%. Again, you cannot measure this price rise and everything by using this kind of phony index numbers like WPI. But even there, you know, on the other day, the other news was saying that the retail inflation, you know, so-called, you know, what they call CPI, uh, rose to 9.9% in November. So uh, on the one side, retail inflation is rising to 9.9% in the same month, November. And today they are saying that in the same month, November, the WPI, the wholesale price index, uh, eased to 7.24%. You see, in the same month, inflation can go up also and it can go down also. <laughs> so this is pure shenanigans. This is all purely, you know, fooling people by using statistics. You know, statistics is, you know, damn lies, lies and statistics. So it's lie, right? Government uses it. Uh, to fool people. But in any case, as I said, they are desperate, so they will show that the inflation has eased and very surely they will reduce the, you know, interest rate. RBI will reduce the interest rate uh, in, uh, in, 20, tra in 2013 or probably on this 18 December itself. And as I said, the inflation is not going to slow down and they will continue to inflate and I, I'm sure the prices will continue to rise in future also. So nothing has changed. Uh, situation remains the same. Uh, the train wreck is coming and I think uh, government is not going to do anything different from they're just going to play inside the status quo and uh, we will have to continue to protect ourselves because uh, you know uh, as, I, as I'm saying since quite long time that Government voluntarily will not stop giving up their power and they will not do the right thing which is required in today's time. Ultimately, market forces will compel them to do whatever is necessary. But till that time, you know, uh, we will have to survive. You and I, you know, my dear viewer, we will have to survive. 
So continue these survival strategies, you know, try to protect your wealth from government inflation. Continue to accumulate your, you know, precious metals and be very careful and take care of yourself, you know. I'll be seeing you pretty soon, maybe after they announce the monetary policy review on 18 December. Uh, so thank you very much for watching me and goodbye for now.